assembling the valve box or installing the valve box is fairly straightforward. Usually there's a little bit of cutting involved uh, in order to fit the box uh, over your pipes. Sometimes you have to cut out a, a piece of a side or sometimes you don't have to cut out anything if the pipes are deep enough in the ground. But in our case, it just uh, our holes are perfect for our situation and we just cut out the uh, slivers of plastic and they fit right in over our pipe and then uh, you'll make your final placement after your valves are fully installed. So now we're ready to uh, start our valve box. We're going to show this in close to real time because it's a, a fairly important part of the process and one of the more technical parts. So here I am, uh, I'm cutting three to four inch pieces of schedule 40 high pressure PVC pipe so that I can use them as connectors to my T's and elbows when putting together the three valves that we have for this system. Of course you want to clean each piece before assembling with PVC cleaner. And once again, we're using fairly quick dry glue. This is a valve. And so I'm going to begin with gluing the valve to the pipe. And every, every valve system uh, is going to be laid out probably just a little bit different, uh, just depending on how many valves you have and where they're located in your system. In this particular system, we are going to put all the valves in one valve box. You can run the valves out to your individual zones and put a valve right at the beginning of each zone. In that case you would need to take your main line all the way to your zone, the beginning of your zone. In this particular case we're going to take our main line just a few feet and put all of our valves in one box. So I've laid out the way I want my valves to lay in the valve box and now I'm just gluing it together piece by piece, making sure that the valves are pointing in the right direction. Just showing you that there's arrows on the valves there, on the front and the back, showing you the direction of the water. You want to take your main line and hook it to the rear of the valve so that the water is, is going through the valve in the right direction. So we've got valves one, two, and three. I'm putting an elbow on the last valve since there won't be any water going past that. So that's how we want to put those valves together. So I'm going to use my cut pieces and just get ready to put all the valves together in a line to hook it up to our main water. So now that we've assembled this, we're ready to go to the exit point of the water. You want to have a, I think he's trying to explain that you want to have plenty of distance between the valves. You see there's a couple of inches of pipe between the valves there. and. Um, you definitely want to leave a little bit so that if you ever have a break in the future um, you'll have you'll be able to cut each individual valve out if necessary and still have something to glue to so uh, always leave you know two or three inches of, of bare pipe between the valves and between your T's and your elbows so that if you ever have to cut one out you'll still have an inch or two to glue that back together without having to take all the valves out and replace them all. Once again use plenty of length on your cut pieces. We're going down about four or five inches on this one. So two of these valves are going in the same direction. Two of the zones are, are 
are going to be going from the valve in the same direction to achieve their positioning. So you notice how one is longer than the others. That's so that the pipes can lay side by side in the trench. Now this valve is going to be facing the opposite direction, so it won't be getting in the way of the other two pipes. If you have multiple valves, if you have uh, more than three, or more than three going in the same direction, you'll have to extend those out a pipe's width each time, or you can actually bring them out and then go up above the pipe, which would require the use of two extra elbows. I'm going to make a quick note here about water volume and, and how to determine what size your zones can be. We're have, we are using a one inch pipe in this particular case which can hold at the most about 20 gallons per minute. Each of your heads has a nozzle that goes in it and each of those nozzles have a, has a rating um, 2, 3, 1.5 gallons per minute. So depending on how big your nozzles uh, that you're using are, um, that's how you decide how many heads you can have on a particular zone. Because we're using one inch valves and one inch pipe, we can have 20 gallons per minute worth of heads. And we have good pressure here. Uh, your pressure is not as important as your volume, but if, as long as you have 40, 50 pounds of pressure, um, you're usually okay but in this case we had about 70 pounds of pressure which will give us approximately 18 to 20 gallons per minute on larger pipe uh, one and a half inch pipe you can have 40 50 gallons per minute and on you know, lower lesser pipe there of course they're going to be lesser so uh, one way of possibly testing that is just take a, a five gallon bucket and and use your spigot to see what kind of pressure is coming out of your spigot and um, you can you can just time and see how long it takes to fill up five gallons and then do the math to decide how many gallons per minute you have coming out of that spigot you know you'll at least have that much uh, coming out of your sprinkler system if you use a larger pipe and a larger meter then you'll of course have more so now we've got all that put together and that is basically the end of putting our valves together so that uh, now we're ready to actually wire the valves.